indeed. Do brace yourself, though, because you are about to receive another important message. A prophet once asked me, why do I need to listen attentively if there are thousands of other prophets just like me? Can't I just listen for a couple of minutes? Or have it on while I'm herding sheep? The other prophets will surely be able to spread the message without me. And that's a very good question, dear prophets. But I'm sorry to say that you will not like the answer. Because it takes a lot of energy to broadcast this message, we have selected a perfect amount of prophets to relay this message, even though all of you statistically will only be paying attention for 75% of the time. Apparently, humans need 25% space out time. It's a built in flaw of the human brain that we never got around to correcting, so it's not your fault. So please, do pay attention between the space outs. You're part of a selected group, and I expect you to listen like your life depends on it. So, what's new on the heavenly front? God is on vacation? Again? I never got word that they were back in the first place, actually. But everything is under control. They don't call me a little god for no reason. Oh! Hold that thought. The vortex of events is all fired up. Today's event begins with a disguised angel about to have his life take a very strange turn. It begins in a tavern in the outskirts of a large city in the Neo-Assyrian Empire. Hmm. We are in the year 710 before the Common Era, in a shady establishment serving unfiltered beer and good company. The bartender is just about to pour another round for the rowdy company in the back room when something stops him in his tracks. Where there had previously been nobody, three women are now standing in front of him. Unusually tall and with long white locks, not a hair out of place. They do not make a sound. All three of them look the same. They are looking around the bar, unblinking. Can I help you? They are looking at the bartender, unblinking. Have you seen this man? What kind of parchment is that? Paper. Paper. What? Shh. <laughs> He goes by the name of Asmodeus. He could also be calling himself Ashma or Asher. Do you know where you are? Everyone in the grandpa's name is Asher. Look at the picture again. Are, are you sure, sure you, you do, do not, not recognize, recognize him? him? What's it to you? He is in trouble. Never seen him in my life. Get out of here if you're not buying anything. If you should happen upon him, call on us. An amulet? The hell am I supposed to do with this? Hold it in your hand and call our names. Uh, Sanoi, Sanzanoi, Samangaloth. And we will find you. What the? Who, who, Goodbye. Now, what the? What? The mysterious women are gone. He picks up the amulet and walks over to the rowdy company in the back room. Just a moment, prophets. Ben? Since this is Asmodeus, could you help me censor any potential, uh, sensitive content that he might say? We'll say. Most definitely we'll say. Thank you. Hey, Asher! Yeah? Some spooks are asking around about you. Aren't they all? Were they hot? Ah, I don't know. Three ladies, all lookalikes. Never blinked once. Gave me this. The S unit. <laughs> are they still here? No, what do you take me for? You're my biggest customer. I told him to hit the road. Just telling you to be careful. Thanks. You're the best. Here you go. Treat yourself. All right, I gotta get back to the bar. I'm coming back here in an hour, making sure you're all alive. What was that all about? You on the run or something? Ah, that. 
Uh, nah, just my family. They want me to become a scholar. I skipped too many classes, so now they're sending people after me. Woo! <sighs> right. Edith, Nurul, the next player has to sing while standing on one leg. That's too easy. And singing the song in... Uh, in the... B backwards! Uh, backwards. Backwards. Lose our best the next round. Oh, 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 good one. You're next, you know. Fuck. Okay, I gotta, I gotta think. Don't overheat that little head of yours. <laughs> Ooh, you gonna let that slide, Asher? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on then. <laughs> <laughs> The man called Asher opens his mouth and is just about to start the song. When he cuts himself off, he tilts his head to the side as if listening intently. Whoa, wait, wait, guys, guys, guys. I, I think some f***er is summoning me. Stop saying weird shit. Just sing the song. You nervous? You look a bit pale. I have to go. <laughs> I told you pretty boys can't hold their drink. Hey, Ash, are you okay? Uh, oh. Hey, guys. I think he's dead. <gasps> <gasps> What's all the yelling about? Hey, get him out of here. No dead people in my house. It's bad luck. It is a known fact that angels can freely move wherever and whenever they like, and they are very fond of that freedom. They commonly disapprove of being summoned directly out of their current meat suit. That is even more true in this case, since Asmodeus has made a couple of loyal friends in this city, or at least drinking buddies. But it's as close to loyal friends he's ever had. Coming back from the dead to explain himself is now going to be out of the question. And now, a different time, a different place. In the year around 960 before the Common Era. <laughs> so we are now about 200 years before the empty meat suit incident in Assyria that we just witnessed. Here we have the summoner calling from a cave, miles outside of Jerusalem, Judea. Can I get some light here, please? It is of utmost importance that I draw this symbol correctly if we are to see the break of dawn again. Of course. Say, uh, wise king, how many more spirits do you need? There is no workforce large enough when you work for the Lord, the highest power in the universe. My task is to rebuild this world more beautiful and rich than it's ever been. Only then will God and his host even consider living with us again. <laughs> Quite many then. Looking rather pointy, this symbol. Do you know what it means? Excellent question. We shall soon find out. All these symbols are in the language of our Lord God. Our minds cannot comprehend the meaning of them. However, I do know that each of these corresponds to a spirit. We'll see what this one calls itself. Are the singers ready? Uh, yep, they're in position. On the summoner's signal, seven different voices begin to hum in an enchanting harmony, reaching a frequency that bounces off of the walls just so. The summoner says, The words! and a bright flash flows out of the circle, only to implode in on itself. An angel appears with a thunderous clap, and it's angry. They usually are. The angel's black wings are silhouetted against its glowing body, and as it turns, the light reflects onto the summoning party. It wobbles slightly, and blinks drunkenly with all its eyes, one at a time. What in the donkey cockle bean skin fuckery is this? Do you have any idea how traumatized those people are going to be? Even I know this is way off protocol, and you, 
Yeah. Wait a minute. You're not. You're human. <laughs> All right. First time a mortal summons me, so not sure how this goes. <clears throat> Who dares? I think we've gone too far, sir. This is. I feel sick. Yes. Ugh. Truly terrifying. I'm right here. This. This has to be a great leader, sir. I. I can feel my boat shaking. Ignore it. Evil spirit, what is your name? Rude, who are you? How dare you be so arrogant? Maybe you are not aware of your circumstances. I am your lord, and you are in my power. Tell me your name. Ashmedai. I mean, Asmodeus. I, how did you... I am King Solomon. Son of David and Bathsheba. From now on, you will do my bidding until I release you. Ooh, this tickles. Don't you want to know my safe word? Scribe, write down everything. Ready! Evil spirit Asmodeus. State your rank, what you are, and what powers you possess. How can I put it in words you'll understand, mortal? Fine. Prince of Hell. Below, Sheol, I exist across the entire spectrum of time-space and space-time. I am born of earth and spirit, life and death, and I specialize in pleasures of the flesh. Please elaborate on the last part. <laughs> oh my, dirty mind. That part means exactly what you think. I am the god of lust, of ecstasy, of reckless abandon. I'm the one you call when you want to just... And he gives some very explicit and detailed examples of his skills and specialties. The scribe glances over at King Solomon, not sure if any of this is fit for the magical papyri. Go ahead, write that down. Yes, write it down, for posterity. Now, I will complete the binding ritual. I invoke the name and recite the words given to me. Creature of the seven spaces, you shall now inhabit but three, as I will lock you away from your domain. You will feel the stretch of time, the pain of impact, and the pull of the earth as mortals do. I hereby bind you, Asmodeus, to my command until the day I release you. What? What did you do? I am ever so grateful for your service. Get out of the circle and follow my men. You little shit! You'll be dead in the blink of an eye! We have time for two more if we hurry. Two more what? Bring the water. Neutralize the circle. What? Hey, don't ignore me when I'm walking away. I have rights. This is so disrespectful. Easy, devil. That's the king you're shouting at. Enjoy the fresh air. Escorted by two guards, Asmodeus is led out of the cave. He feels heavy, flattened, and constricted, all at the same time. Asmodeus can no longer see in all directions of time, no longer step between the folds of space, and worst of all, no longer able to call on any other angels. He is completely alone. Outside of the cave, he sees a small group of entities gathered around a fire, presumably captured as well. One of them is a two-headed demon. Wait, who are they over there? Are they... Friends of yours. I'm just saying, sooner or later he'll summon something smarter than us, and then it'll be the end for all of you. Oi, look at that, we've got a royal visit. Fucking hell, that son of a bitch caught an angel. See, that is what I'm talking about. No safety thinking whatsoever. Hello, young prince. What's up? Uh, we don't want any trouble. Aren't you Zick and Zack? You run a salon in the third circle, right? The very same. You got an appendage? We can modify it. Be it carving, piercing, or bejeweling. Hey, why is it you get two of the three lines? Because my head is bigger. You know I'm sensitive about my size. Oh, here we go. Anyway, that's us. Thought so. Heard the commercials. Listen. 
No human can hold this many spirits without consequence. This will be very temporary. Play along with your games and we'll be out of here in no time. Silence, all of you demons. Demons? That's a bit ignorant, that is. We don't go around calling you mortal or carbon-based. Oh, well, some of us do. You will hold your tongue in the presence of the king. Here he comes now. Are you satisfied with tonight's harvest, sir? Oh, yes. Very. We can leave. Solomon utters a command, soft as a whisper. It leaves a static lingering in the air. And Asmodeus realizes it's the unmistakable sound of the words. The very ground below them begins to undulate and lift them up. A flying carpet. How quaint. The, the words, words are the tools by which everything was created, including you. Well, humanity. This is manifested through songs and words, sometimes accompanied by the drawing of symbols, and on the rare occasion, amplified through blessed objects. I know, Ben, I'm keeping it vague. Calm down. Despite our best efforts, the words tend to find humanity. Some of the songs go back to the very beginning. You remember Samyaza and the Watchers, I presume? giving heavenly knowledge away out of misguided infatuations. Aside from that unfortunate affair, various well-meaning individuals from us and from the rival office have shared the words throughout time. Some humans have even discovered a few formulas entirely on their own and completely by accident, much to their initial distress. All this to say that there are many ways to use the words to manipulate reality. Solomon chooses to use them to tame the wind so he can fly, but in style. I know two things about Solomon. The first is that he was a very powerful sorcerer, having learned much of how to harness the energies of the universe and uncovered many secret writings. The second is that his inspiration was greater than what human hands could manage. The spacious carpet carefully lowers itself outside the walls of a great city. As Asmodeus enters the palace garden, he is met by a crowd of glowing colors and of wings and horns. The guards dismiss him in the middle of the courtyard, but it's a small comfort. The agony in the air is stifling. The human sorcerer has been busier than he could have ever imagined. In the luscious palace garden are hundreds of trapped spirits, creatures of the supernatural kind. In one corner, there's even a djinn. Powerful spirits known for their strength, temperament, and the fact that their bodies are literally fusion reactors. This particular specimen is curled up and rocking back and forth shakily smoking a cigar. Not a regular cigar, mind you. This looks more like it's made of wood. It never ends. Never ends. Hey, hey, buddy. No, no, no. Don't smite me. Please. Easy now, he's all right. Oh, you're scaring her. Shh. I'm not going to smite you. I'm a prisoner too. Oh. But that's worse. He caught an angel. <laughs> yeah, not my best moment. I'm Asmodeus. And you? I am not. Can you tell me what's going on? Where do I even begin? He makes us do all manner of things, depending on our talents. Um, everything from teaching him magic to showing where gemstones are hidden in the earth. I'm between jobs at the moment tried to boil him alive while I was heating his bathwater. His latest project is building a mansion for some god I've never heard of. But how? Since when can a human do this? Someone's messed with the rules. And where did he get all this power from? The sorcerer, uh, uh, Salami. Solomon. And I don't know, but more of us keep coming. We've got to find a way to get word to the kings. Okay, okay. Someone must be coming for us. They must have noticed a big number of us missing by now below. It's going to take a lot more, I think. We're never home at the same time. 
So this won't register as out of the ordinary. Huh. Wait, I know that guy. Yo, Ornius. Fuck off, Asmodeus. You total slut. I told you this would happen if you kept giving away your sigil left and right. Nar, Zigzag. Meet Ornius, one of my pals from the first circle. Peace. Hi, we are not pals. His kind colonized our home. We were doing perfectly fine before an army of angels took over the pit. Right, Zigzag? Well, I don't know. They're, they're all right. And we've got loads of angel friends. A bit dramatic for my liking. And they cry a lot, but... And we have a good laugh every now and then. No offense, I haven't been below much, but I'm just curious. What are you? I am a... Come again? Yeah, that's the language barrier in action. The uh, respectful term would be native. Ooh. Yeah, the demon word is a bit problematic for... I can speak for myself, angel breed. Our tongue is impossible for you to mimic. You'd be surprised at what my tongue could do. Nice. No. This guy. Stay away from him, Naar. Impossible to talk to. I'm leaving. What I'm wondering is who the hell leaked all our contact info to a... Human? Oh, and I get my hands on them, I'm gonna kill them. Eat their guts and ground them into powder and feed them to- Just keep your voice down. Whoever it is, it's someone powerful. And you never know if they're listening. Yeah. Okay, I'm cool. Wait, you don't think it's him? Him with a capital L? From what I've heard, he is unstable enough to do something like this. Hmm, but he wouldn't go as far as actually helping humans. Wait, you angels know quite a lot, don't you? In heaven all knowledge can be found. You can get us out of here. Yes, all knowledge can be found in heaven. Unfortunately for you, I didn't like school very much. But you must know something useful. Does any of this seem familiar? The language? The symbols? I guess. But I never stayed for a full lecture in any of the classes. I uh, prefer to learn in the field. <laughs> he definitely uses the, the words very deliberately, that's for sure. I did recognize some of the symbols they used in the cave, but I can't remember their meanings. So, you're saying you could have avoided getting bound if you just paid attention in school? Something like that. Oh, man. Why would you... Ugh! Some of us wish we had your privilege. I tried to sneak into a seminar in heaven one time, but a whirling flame struck me down. Yeah, that'd be the flaming swords. Hold on a minute. You don't seem fallen. Because I'm not. Why? I'm just noticing we're all from hell one way or another. But if you're an angel and not fallen, what are you doing with this crowd? Both of my parents are kings of hell. One of them has dual alignments, sort of. I get on the wrong list sometimes. Oh cool, I didn't know angels are children. My mother taught me that God made you all. But wait, you guys are kind of androgynous. How does that... you don't have any... Junk. I was going to say little angel kids running around, but sure. But this is good news. The kings will look for you. We can still be saved. I wouldn't hold my breath if I were you. I'm doing my own thing and they have a lot going on. They don't notice until I make a huge splash and they have to clean up my mess. Like what happened with the Roman Empire. The what empire? Uh, nothing. But hey, I just remembered there actually is a heavenly search unit looking for me. Awesome! We're saved! Heaven doesn't pull any punches when it comes to retaliation, right? Potentially. It might be a while. There are three dumb dumb angels that share a single brain cell. They always barely catch up with me. But now I can't do anything but stay put. We'll just wait for them to find me, and when they do... Solomon is toast. We interrupt this transmission with some news from up top. 
So the angel hangout was... I'm not sure what to say. My manuscript did not help one bit. It didn't cover any of what was to come. I'd prepared a whole battery of answers that I never got to use. One of the angels asked me how I was, and it all went downhill from there. I completely froze. And then more questions came. How do you like it here? Do you miss Earth? Hey, remember when you puked in front of the archangels at the gates of heaven? I heard you sing this melody. Could you sing it again and harmonize with me? Are you okay? I did the only sensible thing and retreated to my office. This transmission will recommence once I've uncurled from my ball of shame. Be not afraid.